Hi everyone, I wanted to come on and talk about the current energies. So there's a few different things at play here. Um, for one, we had the eclipse last night. Uh, it was also a full moon. Uh, we have Mercury retrograde on the first. There's also some solar eclipses coming up. So some of you are probably feeling very off right now. You might be having weird dreams. You might be having purging dreams in particular, where it's like any shadow work that you haven't done or anything that you haven't wanted to face about yourself, about other people, whatever it might be, just anything that's been holding you back is probably going to come to the surface to be purged. If you try to ignore it in waking life, you might end up having dreams about it. Um, I do want to say, I'm going to get more into it with cards as well, but I do want to say that there is also a timeline merge that's coming up. Um, this could be causing mental fog, confusion, uh, maybe a bit of fogginess, like, like maybe, like maybe some, uh, some mood swings even. Because I, I feel like that there's these, how do I even explain this? It's, we've been on a lower timeline and I feel like we're about, the collective is about to ascend to a higher timeline and it's not so much even ascending as just merging with a higher timeline. And so I feel like there's almost this energy that's leaking through this higher timeline. So some of you, I don't, I'm, not, I'm trying to word it properly because sometimes as a psychic, it's like I channel strange things and it's, it's like, I get the visuals like in my mind's eye and I, I can feel the energy, but sometimes it's just hard to put it into words. But, but yeah, we're basically merging with a higher timeline and that can be a little bit of a chaotic process. So so really just be patient with yourselves right now. Really try to go easy on yourself. Just it's, it's a, when there's a, when there's a big major, you know, energetic shift like this with the collective, it's, it's hard for, you know, our human minds to, to fully process it. Um, I feel like there's this energy that's almost leaking through this higher timeline. It's kind of like they're flowing and it, it's like, we're slowly starting to, it's like we kind of start merging, then we kind of go back down to the lower timeline and then start merging again. But it's it's like ultimately, um, it's not linear necessarily, but we are merging with this higher timeline. So you might have off days where you feel like you're still in the lower timeline and then you're going to have better days when it's like you feel like you are, you know, getting on that higher timeline where your manifestations are real. For some of you, it's like you've been manifesting certain things with love, money, career, whatever it might be. Um, and you're channeling those things and you're feeling the energy of these things leaking through that higher timeline, but those things might not fully exist in that energy in this current timeline. I hope that makes sense. Um, or it's like you're, you're getting the more evolved version of those things on the higher timeline. Like, let's say it's a, a job or a career on this current timeline where we're on, it might be more of a karmic energy, but on this higher timeline, that same, um, business that same you know career you're focusing on is is actually going to be of higher vibrational energy i hope that makes sense i hope i worded that properly um i'm gonna get more into it with cards um i do want to say too so it's really important to be honest with yourselves right now about what needs to change in your life um when it comes to relationships romantic friendships family members um when it comes to just your own personal truths, I feel like this eclipse is really bringing in this very heavy energy of truth. It's like people are going to be forced to face their demons. They're going to be forced to face those things that they've been trying to bury. It's, it's almost like forced shadow work in a way. There's, there's no way to really avoid this shadow work because like I was saying, it's like if you try to avoid it in your waking life, I feel like it's just going to end up, you're going to end up having these purging dreams or... Um, honestly, I'm, I'm even seeing nightmares for some, um, I do study, um, I've studied dream interpretation on and off since I was a teenager and nightmares are your subconscious's way of getting your attention. If there's something that's, that you're ignoring in waking life. So, I mean, I know nightmares are unpleasant, but it's also good to interpret them as well because there typically is, unless there's something demonic or dark going on, you know, that's the exception. But in general, most nightmares are your subconscious's way of getting your attention um, to whatever you're trying to run from in your waking life. But anyway, I do want to get more cards on this and see what else, what other advice I can give you guys. Um... 
I, I do want to say there on this lower timeline that we've been on, there's almost this energy of, I don't know if it's self-hatred, but it, it's, it's like this, it's like this energy of guilt or this energy of, of, it's like been very stagnant. So some of you have been very stagnant for a while and it's like, you're about to go through all these major changes all at once. And it might, it might be really surprising for some of you. Um, there's something I want to say about like relationships too. If anyone, okay. Let's see. I'm trying to find the proper way to word this. So you can have relationships, friendships, family, family relationships, whatever it might be that on the lower timeline, you guys might be acting more out of ego or it's more of, it's more karmic. And on the higher timeline, those same exact people might be higher level soulmates um, people, you know, whatever it might be, there's, there, it's almost like the interactions are different based on the timeline you're on. And that's not for everyone. For some karmics are just karmics on every timeline, but for some of you, you could be at, interacting with someone who actually is a higher level soulmate, but you guys are interacting in a very karmic way with each other because you're on that lower timeline. But when you're on the higher timeline, that communication shifts, that energy between you guys shifts. Um, and, and so it's really important to kind of use discernment right now to be able to distinguish higher level soulmates from actual karmics um, and understanding like the difference between the timelines, you know, like, is this a higher level soulmate that you're just interacting with karmically right now because of the lower timeline? Or is this actually just a karmic? Um, it's going to be different for all of you. And I, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um but I think, I think one way to tell is, I don't want to say dark forces are trying to keep people stuck on the lower timeline, but, but sort of is kind of, is what the energy I'm feeling. Um, people that are actually just karmics on all timelines, people that are actually just karmic, they are going to try to keep you stuck on this lower timeline. They, one way that you're going to know is that they're going to enable you. If you have really severe alcohol or drug or sex addiction, they're going to enable you. They're not going to be willing to call you out. They're, they're going to enable you because they want you to stay on this lower timeline with them. They're toxic and they don't want you to move to this higher timeline. They don't want you to be the most evolved version of yourself. Those actual like real genuine karmics, again, real genuine karmics as opposed to just a higher level soulmate that you might be interacting with in a karmic way because of the lower timeline. But the actual like real just karmics, um, yeah, they're going to try to keep you stuck on that lower timeline. They're going to, and like I said, they're going to try to enable you. Whatever addiction you have, they're, they're not going to want to see you do better for yourself. They're going to want to see you stuck on this timeline because I feel like for a lot of them, they're going to be stuck on that time, on that time, on this timeline. A lot of them almost have like, um, I guess you could say like succubus type spirits, um, like leech type energy, like psychic vampires. There's, there's a lot of really low vibrational energies on this timeline. And so they are not able to ascend to those higher timelines with you. And so they're really going to try to drag you down. They're going to try to, um, almost, how do I, how do I word what's what I'm channeling right now? I hope you guys are following. I know this is kind of a strange reading. I know this isn't my usual type of reading, but it really needed to come through. Uh, my spirit guides were pushing it too. I was just, I was mind my own business and my spirit guides, I just kept getting that nudge. Like, okay, there's people that need to know that the confusion, the anxiety they're feeling out of nowhere, it's it's because of, of you know, like I said, retrograde, solar flares, the, the eclipse, and also especially the timeline merge more than anything. And I think that the timeline merge is happening right now because of all those, um, you know, the astrological energy that's at play too. It's, it's almost like it's happening right now because of that. This this astrological energy is, is kind of fueling that timeline merge. Um but anyway, as I was saying, 
yeah, you'll be able to recognize actual karmics that are just not able to evolve to that higher timeline with you because, like I said, they they have almost like a succubus type energy. Some of them, um, like leechy energy, psychic vampire energy, kind of victim mentality type of energy, just very low vibrational. And I'm not talking about people that are just depressed or going through something that's different. But I'm I'm talking about actual like energy vampire types. Um, and, and like I said, one of the reasons, one of the ways you're going to recognize that is because they're going to, they're going to mimic the energy of people around them. But I feel like they're also going to try to mimic your energy to pre pretend to be what you want them to be, or they're going to try to get you to mimic their energy. Like they're trying to rub off on you. Like they want to change you, but like in the worst ways, they don't want you to evolve. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like. It's almost like these people will bring out the worst version of you. Um, like I said, if you're if you have like heavy, you know, drinking drugs, like um, like substance abuse issues, not just drinking a little bit, but like, you know, like heavy, heavy drinking on a daily basis or drug use or sex addiction or, um, you know, uh, not taking accountability or bad behaviors, um, negative, like bad, like uh, toxic mindsets that hold you back that kind of thing. These karmics are going to try to get you to stay in that energy. They're not going to call you out. If you're doing hard drugs in front of them, they're not going to like, they're not going to say anything. They're not going to say like, oh, like I'm worried about you. Like just, you know, be safe. Like don't, you know, don't do that. Um, or if you're not taking accountability and you're blaming everyone else for your problems, these karmics are probably, as long as you're not blaming them, they're going to be on board with it. They'll be like, yeah, it's, that, it's her fault. It's his fault. It's this person's fault. It's everyone's fault but yours. Um, they're going to enable you to not take accountability. They're going to enable you to be the worst version of yourself. Um, these, these karmics are very... Uh, I mean, they have a leechy energy, but they're also very weak minded. They're very, um, they're, they're very obsessive. Um, I have an example. I don't know why it's coming to mind, but years and years ago I had some, I had a stalker, um, and, and he, it, it didn't get too far, but I remember I, I was cuddling with this guy. Um, my friends had set me up with this guy and I was cuddling with him and I was in, in bed with him and we we're just cuddling and, you know, we were talking and hanging out and I, I, we were, we were drinking and I told him, I'm like, there's someone at my window, you know? And like, I went over to the window and I was freaked out and this guy wasn't listening to me. He, he was like, he was so like just codependent and obsessive and just so focused on what he wanted that he didn't care about whatever was going on in the moment. You know what I mean? Like he just wanted me to come back to bed and cuddle with him and he didn't give a shit about anything else. But I went to the window. I was like, no, there's someone at my window. And he's like, no, like you're just, you know, you're just drinking, you just come back to bed. Like it's all good. Um, and that's the kind of karmic energy because I found out later that there was someone stalking me. The man that actually was at my window confessed to it and told me that, you know, that he actually was there and he apologized for it. But but still, um, it's that kind of energy where it's like these these karmics. It's like that man did not give a shit about my safety or about what was going on. He just wanted me to be there cuddling with him. He didn't care about how I was feeling or the, or the fear that I was feeling like he didn't care about any of it. He just wanted me to come back to bed and cuddle with him. And that's the kind of energy I get from these lower vibrational karmics. They, they present this energy of, you know, it's, it's almost, it's not love. It's really not love. It's like obsession. Like they will cling to you. They will be obsessed with you, but they're, they're not genuinely in love with you. If you're venting to them about something, they're all they're thinking about is They're not thinking about you. In that moment when you're venting, they're not thinking about you. They're thinking about um, just how to, it's, it's almost like they, they try to manipulate the conversations, the energy that I'm channeling, like they try to manipulate the conversations to, um, to win you over more, I guess you could say. And you can kind of tell in conversation if you're upset, if you're venting about something where they're using it as an excuse to um, seduce you or have sex with you, or they're using it as an excuse to, um, to make themselves look better in your eyes, but they're not actually listening and caring genuinely about what you're going through and what you're venting about. 
So I'm just trying to put that energy out there of like understanding how you can tell um, with this specific collective of karmics, of course, like karmics, you know, it's, it's always a little bit different, but but with this specific collective, I am getting that that leechy succubus kind of obsessive uh, type of energy. And, and, you know, they will try to keep you on this lower timeline. They will try to keep you from ascending. They're probably going to get more obsessive, more aggressive, more dramatic than ever over the next few weeks or so. Because like I said, these energies that are coming in are meant to ascend you guys to this higher timeline that these karmics that can't follow you to the higher timeline, they don't want you to be there. They want you to stay on this lower timeline with them. They want you to stay in this low vibration with them. Um, I would say be mindful of who you're having sex with as well right now because for some of them, there is some... there. There's an energy exchange when you have sex with someone, so you really need to be mindful of what's going on spiritually when you have sex with someone. You need to be mindful of how your energy feels around certain people, like if you feel more drained, if you feel anxious. I mean... I'm not talking about like a nervousness, like, you know, you're shy, they're shy, that's different. But I'm talking about like a, like you just kind of feel them leeching your energy, like on a soul level, it's like you feel like something is just off with that person. Um, you got to be honest with yourself. I think another way to recognize the signs too is like they... Like I said, they, they'll want to enable you. They won't, they don't want you to be the best version of yourself. So whatever your toxic thing you're doing, whether it's hurting you physically, hurting yourself mentally, um, not taking accountability, they, they're fine with that because it's lower vibrational energy. They want to keep you at that level. They don't want you to ascend. And, um, I feel like, so it's, so it's like, not only will they try to bring out the worst in you and try to keep you on this lower karmic version of yourself, but I, I feel like. I feel like also if you try to get them to ascend, they won't. They, um, like, let's say they have like a drug problem or something like that, or they have some kind of addiction and you, you're trying to get them to quit that addiction or you're trying to get them to stop and you're telling them, Hey, this is hurting me. Like, please don't do this as much anymore. Like, let's fix this. Not only will they not really fix it, but they, they won't, um, they might present the illusion to you that they're trying to fix that issue, but they're really just presenting that illusion so that they can keep you stuck with them. Um, and, you know, intention is a big thing. Intention is really important. So, you know, let's say you have someone like a friend, family member, a, a partner, whoever it is that's like addicted to drugs or addicted to like they maybe they maybe they drink a lot and they like start yelling when they get drunk or maybe they're doing some type of hard drug and it just it brings out the worst of them. Um they want you there with them. They want you in that energy with them, enabling each other. And I feel like if you call them out and you try to get them to ascend with you, which they these karmics cannot, but if you do call them out and try to get them to, to change those patterns and, and ascend with you, um, I feel like they might present the illusion that they're changing those things for you, like I said, but it's that's what I was going what I was getting into when I said it's about the intention. Because they're they're doing they're pretending to make those changes to manipulate you, to keep you hooked. But it's it's their own how do I explain this? It's like it's their own selfish motives. They wouldn't they don't care if their heavy drug use is hurting you and breaking your heart and upsetting you and, and stressing you out and scaring you, whatever it might be. They don't really care that it's upsetting you. They care that they might lose you because of that. Does that make sense? Someone that genuinely loves you, if they're doing something toxic like that, they're going to want to work on it. They're going to see that it's hurting you and they're going to want to work on it, not just for themselves, but also for the relationship. They're going to be like, I don't want to do this to my partner. I don't want to... Um, I don't want to stress my partner out like this. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want my partner to see me that way. I, I don't want to, um, to hurt my partner like this, but in, in, you know, and they're, they're trying to present this illusion of like changing for the right reasons. But like I said, it's like, they're just chain They're They don't have the empathy to change for the right reasons. They're, they're just trying to change because they don't want to lose you. They don't want you to leave. Um, so I hope you understand that energy difference between, you know, 
someone not genuinely having the empathy and the emotional depth to understand what they are doing wrong and wanting to change so that, you know, they can genuinely make you happy and someone that's just pretending to change or, or, you know, kind of making surface level changes because they don't want to be left behind. They don't want you to, to leave them. Um, so really be mindful of that, you know, and, and I personally think that I'm going to pull cards here too. I personally think that people that really care about you or really love you are, they're not going to enable you. People that really love you are going to call you out on your shit. People that really love you or, or at least care about you are, you know, they're going to call you out. They're, they're going to say like, Hey, I think you can do better than this. I think you are better than this. I think that, you know, I see more in you than this. Like you, like I, you should take accountability. You should be honest with yourself. Um, like they're going to want to see you at your full potential. They're, they're going to want to, and I'm not saying like the, you know, they won't accept your insecurities and your flaws. Like everyone, everyone's human. Like everyone has abandonment issues. Everyone has insecurities. Everyone has, you know, a dark side. Everyone has their fears. It's human nature, you know, and if you really love or care about someone, you have to accept all of them. You have to accept all those things. I mean, you have to accept who they really are. You have to accept, you know, their darkness just as much as their light. Um, but, you know, there's certain things like toxic patterns or addictions or just not taking accountability, just, you know, things that can be changed, things that aren't necessarily a part of just who someone is. You know what I mean? Um, like if someone's, you know, doing drugs heavily, that's not just like a part of who they are. Um, you might have to accept the, you know, you, you have to accept the abandonment issues and the, the trauma and everything that maybe is the root cause of why they're doing drugs that heavily. But I wouldn't say that you have to accept the drug use itself. Does that make sense? It's like you, you want to accept and embrace the person for who they really are. But there's certain patterns um, and behaviors that are just not really who someone truly is. So I hope I hope I worded that correctly and made sense and made sense of that. But yeah, someone who really cares about you is going to want to see you do better. They're going to want to see you be honest with yourself. They're going to want to see you take accountability. They're going to want to see you um, step up and work on being the best version of yourself and, you know, work on, you know, any addictions that you have or anything that's keeping you stagnant. Especially if someone knows you on a soul level, because they're going to look at you, they're going to be like, no, I know you like I know, I know you're, you're not usually like this. Like I know what's underneath all this, what's underneath, underneath the ego, what's underneath the, the facade, the addictions, whatever it might be. Like, I know that you have flaws, everyone does, but, but I know your true self, you know, and, and someone that really cares about you is going to want you to be your true self. They're going to want to be whether, you know, darkness, light, all of it. They're going to want you to be who you truly are. They're going to want you to be the best version of yourself. And for some, the best version of you isn't like, you know, love and light and positive vibes only. For some of you, you know, some people do have more darkness than others. Um, but it, it's about, I think it's about truth and honesty. It's about, you know, who you really are as a person. It's not about being good or bad. It's just, it's about being who you truly are. Um, and like I said, someone that loves you or cares about you is going to want you to be who you truly are. Um, and whatever darkness or light or whatever energies come with that, they're going to want you to be your true self. Whereas someone who's really karmic, they're going to, like I said, they're going to enable you. They're going to keep you stagnant. They're going to want to keep you on this lower vibrational timeline. Um, they're going to anything that takes you away from the truth, from clarity, from making life changes. They're going to be all for that. Anything that keeps you blocked, they're going to they're going to want that. Um, so, yeah, really be mindful about the energies that you guys have around you right now. 
But for others, like I said, you might have people around you where it's like that you guys actually are soulmates, but you're interacting in a karmic way because you're on this lower timeline. So really use discernment right now about who actually is toxic and trying to keep you, you know, in this energy of being the 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 worst version of yourself um, and enabling you and who genuinely wants, you know, who genuinely wants what's best for you. Um, anyway, I know I've rambled quite a bit, so I'm going to pull cards finally. <laughs> sometimes I repeat things too, because when I channel, it's like more information comes through because sometimes I'll go back to something and I'm like, wait, I know there was more to that. I know there was more to that energy, but I, I think whatever else I need to say here is going to come through the cards. Oh, there is this energy of, um, of guilt. This, this lower timeline that we've been on, there's this heavy energy of guilt. And I think it kind of makes sense why these, you know, succubus type spirits um, are, are able to, it's like they're able to feed off people's insecurities, their self-hatred. They're, they're able to, um, it's almost like they find subtle ways to push people to make all the wrong decisions. Um... And then that increases their guilt, that, that deepens their guilt. And so that guilt is, is a big part of that. That lack of self-forgiveness is a big part of what is keeping some, some of you stuck on this lower timeline. Um, so I think there's just this energy of like, you know, address the things that you need to address. There's the, the energy I get overall, there's this energy of chaos coming in over the next few weeks, but there's also this major energy of truth. Like justice and just truth. More than anything, truth is the, the word that keeps coming through. Um, just being your true self. But yeah, be mindful of, of guilt energy. Be mindful of anything that's kind of keeping you in that energy because like I, I do I do keep getting something about accountability too, where it's it's almost like they they for some of you it's like they're enabling you by convincing you to not take accountability, and that actually leads to you feeling more guilt. So um because I feel like these karmics do not want to make waves. They don't want to do anything. They're they're more concerned about keeping you than they are about, you know, you actually being happy or you actually like, like they don't really care if you're happy with them just as long as you're with them. You know, it's like a very toxic, very clingy energy that I get from these karmics. Um, and I feel like for some of you, if you're trying to sabotage these connections... It's it's not going to work. You're gonna to need to be assertive and actually end those types of connections because, like I said, these people, these karmics, do not give a shit if you're happy or not. I'm putting it out there because I feel like for some of you, I'm getting this energy of like, whether it's like a friendship or a family member or a romantic relationship or something that you've been trying to end, and I feel like there's this energy of like you trying to sabotage it, like you trying to be more distant or kind of. Um, more um like playing games or 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 so, like it's, I don't know like I just get this energy of like sabotage or like you try to like end things with this person and they pretend not to understand that you were trying to end things with them and they're like okay we're good now like like they 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 pretend to like they play dumb or they pretend to be delusional almost. I hope that makes sense. Cause like, I, I just see like this conversation that maybe is going to happen or has happened for some of you where it's like, you're trying to like end connections, but you're doing it, you're, you're doing it too gently or you're doing it in very subtle ways. Um, where you're just kind of like, I don't know, like something just feels off with, with this, with these people, like, or something just feels off with this energy. And it's almost like you're trying to, like, you might say like, oh, we should see other people. And they're like, okay, like, let's both see other people. We'll be polyamorous, but let's stay together. You know, like, it's like, it's that kind of energy where like, you're trying to end the connection in a subtle way. And, um, and these these lower vibrational karmics can tell that you're trying to to end the connection, but 
they're going to come back at you with something like they're going to, you know what I mean? It's almost like they're, they're seeing it as like a, a, like they're not accepting it. It's like you're trying to end it or you're trying to sabotage it, but you're not being assertive enough about it or you're not being forward enough about it. And so it's like, like you tell them you need space and this person's like, okay, like I'll give you all the space you want. Let's talk next week or, or whatever. Like they're not like you're trying to end it, but you need to be more clear and more direct and set stronger boundaries because it's not going to work to sabotage it. These karmics, if you're in one of those situations, these, this karmic, these karmics are obsessed. They are obsessed. They're codependent. They're, um, they're dramatic. They're aggressive, aggressive. They're, um, there's just this really weird like succubus type energy I get from these karmics. So so yeah, whether male or female, just take it as it resonates. But you guys need to be aware of that. You're going to need to step into your power and be more assertive. Um, because like I said, there's these energies that will try to keep you stuck. They're, they're going to try to keep you stagnant. Queen of Cups, the Magician, the King of Pentacles... The Five of Cups, the Ten of Swords. Hmm. Tell me more about this. Three of Wands. Death. King of Swords, the Lovers, the Ace of Pentacles, the Page of Cups. Now take it out as it resonates. For some, this could be you. For some, this could be your person. But I feel like there's like a toxic feminine energy here who tries to present herself as a queen of cups and is like trying to like manifest this. So it's kind of just the energy that I was talking about before I even pulled cards where it's, it's almost like you try to sabotage it or you try to leave this person and this person just has like a like like this person's pretending to be delusional and not understand what you're saying you know, and they're playing on your guilt. They're, they're playing this like queen of cups card, like this kind of energy, like they're, they're presenting a certain image. Um, they're, they're playing dumb. They're pretending to be naive. Um, I remember like, th this is like the example that's coming to mind, but I remember years ago, I had this friend that was trying to, um, this was like years and years ago, but I had this friend that was trying to break up with his girlfriend and he broke up with her and she was drunk that night. And then so she drove herself home and she came back the next morning and she pretended like she didn't remember them breaking up. And they actually ended up staying together because I guess they had both been drunk when they broke up, but it was what he genuinely wanted. But she was able to get him back because she played kind of cutesy and innocent and was like, oh, I was really drunk. I don't remember us breaking up like, you know, like, don't, I don't know, like it, it's that kind of toxic energy. Um, where I feel like there's this like toxic so again this could be you this this could be your person I was really trying not to do a third party reading because I swear like the last three readings <laughs> the last three readings have been like third party readings and I'm trying not to keep doing third party readings because there's 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 just this heavy third party energy though in the collective you know it keeps coming out because I am getting that storyline here where it's almost like there's this toxic feminine energy that that pretends to be a queen of cups type that is trying to manifest this man. But I feel like as the king of pentacles, I feel like he's being very grounded and stable. Um, this could even be like a female water sign and a male earth sign for some. Take it as it resonates. But or this could be like a water sign. Maybe one person here is a water sign. One person's an earth sign. T you know, take it how it fits. But but it's almost like they're both trying to manifest something, but in different ways. And it's almost like the energy is like clashing. So it's like she's trying to manifest him. Now, this could be like this could be a, a relationship. This could be a friendship. This could be a um, 
a family member, take it as it resonates. It could be two women, two men, just take it out it fits. But I feel like this is an established relationship. Like this isn't two people that like don't know each other well or still hasn't haven't gotten things off the ground. Like I feel like these these this is two people that do have like like a, a codependent relationship or they have some they have some type of relationship here. Um, like they do talk on a regular basis. They do see each other regularly. I feel like there is something here, but I feel like with this, this couple or these two friends or whoever this is for you, like I said, this could be your person dealing with a third party, or this could be you. This could be someone that you know that you're dealing with. Take it as it resonates. But anyway, I feel like this, this toxic person that's trying to present herself as a queen of cups is trying to manifest this this king of pentacles to to stay to stay in the lower timeline with her to not evolve she's enabling him um she's just going along with with what he says she's just she's trying to keep him stuck in this toxic energy with her she's trying to keep she is codependent on him and she is noticing that he's not as codependent on her as he used to be. And she's trying to drag him back down and make him codependent on her again. And she's getting frustrated because he's, he's not, he's distancing himself and he's not going to be in that codependent energy with her again. Um, and it's interesting because with the magician here, it's almost like they're both trying to manifest and it's like clashing because she's really obsessively trying to manifest like she could be meditating on it, trying to manifest that he does not break up with her or that he does not, um, you know, end the friendship or whatever this connection is between them. And he's actually trying to manifest a way out. He's trying to manifest a way out of this. He's trying to sabotage this. And like I said, he's not going to be able to sabotage it. He's going to need to he's going to need to directly end it with this person because this person's obsessive and a little bit crazy and this person's not, he's going to have to say no and he's going to have to stick to that. Um, five of cups, ten of swords, though, it does look like that connection is coming to an end. He is being more logical in the king of pentacles energy with um, death in the king of swords. I almost feel like this this connection might have been keeping him from an important transformation. And with the death, I feel like he is going to go through a rebirth. Um, I'm actually seeing King of Swords in a positive light in this context because King of Swords can be someone who's very, I mean, they, they can be logical, but they can be a little cutthroat. But I, I'm actually seeing this as more like an emperor type of energy where this this man is stepping into this this or it could be a woman male or female take it as it resonates but this person's going through this transformation stepping into this king of swords energy being more assertive more dominant the lovers making a decision ace of pentacles going after what he wants um page of cups going after you know the the actual life and the love that he wants and ascending to that higher timeline and not letting anything keep him on you know, the lower vibrational karmic timeline. Um, it's almost like he's like catching up to someone or he's catching up to something. It's it's almost like I feel like... I almost feel like there's been this energy of illusion around him and he's going to break free of that. And once he's away from that toxic karmic, he's going to see things more clearly. And I feel like he's going to be ascending to that higher timeline. Um, damn, I really didn't want to do a third party reading. It's fucking, it's annoying because it keeps coming up. Like it comes through the cards and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not trying to like, uh, I'm not trying to have every reading be a third party reading. But anyway, let me get more messages. Um, let me get some more. I'll probably come back on soon as well and see what else, see what else wants to come out. But yeah, like I said, it's just it's just the same as my advice as before. There's this energy of truth. Um, the energies are going to be chaotic. There's going to be a lot of epiphanies coming up. It's best not to avoid those epiphanies, that clarity when it comes in. It's best to really face these things head on. Um, it's like I said, with these energies, it's going to get more chaotic. It's kind of this energy of you either go with the, with the current or you're going to get dragged. You know what I mean? Like you can go and it can be kind of steady and you can, you know, you can just kind of merge with this timeline or you're going to get violently dragged and there's going to be a lot more chaos in your life if it has to happen that way. Does that make sense? It's almost like you try to ignore the truth about, you know, yourself, about relationships, about whatever's going on, whatever's kept you stagnant 
Whatever's been holding you back, you're going to need to face those truths. Because I feel like otherwise it's like you're you're going to be forced to face them. You know what I mean? Like you could, some you might end up having nightmares or something like that where you're, you have to look at the truths you've been trying to avoid. Or it's like you end up having a really dramatic, chaotic night because it's like you wanted to avoid something and now it's in your face. You know, like you wanted to see, um, um, like you wanted to sweep things under the rug and now it's just like, like you find out something really harsh or really upsetting. I'm sorry to say that, but that's just the energy I'm feeling. You know what I mean? Like, um, or let's say you're the one that's, that, you know, that's, that's dealing with drug use or you're being enabled or something by, by someone that it's like, you might have a night where you, you overdo it with drugs or drinking or something of that sort. It's, it's almost like your your people are being forced to make really big changes um, and it's better to go to let things flow naturally if you can and not have to do things the chaotic way. But people are going to be facing tower moments. And like I said, if you want to avoid those tower moments, you need to get in this energy of truth, of clarity, of justice, of honesty, of taking accountability, of making the changes that you need to make on your own consciously. Um Ending those, you know, not trying to sabotage and just run from connections that are no longer serving you, but actually directly ending those connections and being like, hey, I'm done with this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Like, you are a toxic person or you're, you're, this, this isn't for me. Like, you know, because like I said, with those karmics, it's like, they're so obsessive that they're not going to, unless you say it like that, they're going to keep they're going to keep clinging. They're going to keep making excuses. They're going to try to, they're going to try to stay in your life unless you directly end it. There is no sabotaging. You know, you have to directly end the things that are, that are no longer serving you. Um, and again, you have to use that discernment to recognize the karmics that are enabling you from the, um, from, you know, higher level soulmates that you might just be in a karmic energy with right now because of the lower timeline. But it's like when you get on the higher timeline, you guys are going to communicate differently. There's, you know, like there's something deep there on a soul level, but it's like the mind is it, the ego or the mind is kind of getting in the way on this lower vibrational timeline. Um, but things can shift pretty quickly once once that that timeline merge happens. Um, but yeah, just truth. Truth is what's coming through more than anything. Just that energy of just truth. It's, it's not positive or negative. It's not about that. It's, it's just about truth. It's just about being exactly who you are, exactly who you want to be, you know? If your truth is that you are a, a complete bitch, like you, that is what feels right to you, not just a defense mechanism, but that feels right, then that's fine. That is your truth. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's not always, it's not, not everyone is in that energy of like being, um, you know, sometimes the high, highest version of someone's self is it's not what society would, would approve of. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it has to be, it, it's what's right for you on a soul level. Okay, let's get some final messages here. I hope that made sense. Um, the world, the devil. Yeah, you really got to be mindful of, of you really got to develop and use your intuition right now. It's really important. I had to pause for a minute and just like look at it because I'm like, okay, this is an interesting energy. I almost feel like what I'm channeling from this is, is like I said, this lower timeline almost has this vibration of guilt. So some of you almost feel like you don't deserve to be on the higher timeline. You almost, some of you almost have this self-hatred that's keeping you on the lower timeline that needs to be addressed. Um, because it's like the world, it's like old cycles, old karmic cycles are completing. This, this old timeline is completing 
But with the devil card, because the devil is about like patterns, um, especially like subconscious patterns, addictions, like the things that hold you back. And it's like those things are for some of you, it's like they cause you anxiety, insomnia, um, or maybe you've made mistakes and you haven't forgiven yourself for those mistakes. But I, I feel like if you can clear those things up, that's important. You know what I mean? Like, if you need to apologize to someone, apologize to them. Um, even whether they forgive you or not, it's not really about what they do. It's just that is your truth. You know what I mean? Like, you want to speak your truth. You you want to, like, if you want to apologize to someone, do that for, not just for them, but for yourself as well. Like, sometimes you need, you just need to say that. Um, because for some of you, you don't want to let this devil energy get you in a nine of swords energy and keep you stagnant and keep you stuck and keep you repeating karmic cycles and just going around and around in circles. Um, because for some of you, I almost feel like, because I feel like the whole, the whole collective is merging with this higher timeline. But for some of you, it's almost like you could take some of the karmic energy with you to the higher timeline so it's almost going to feel like you're still on a lower timeline, even though you're technically going to be on the higher timeline. Does that make sense? Because it's like you're still going to be punishing yourself for things from the past. Um, like I said, apologize and, and take accountability and do what you need to do. Do what you need to do to live in accordance with your, your higher ideals. Um, temperance, finding that balance, healing, peace. Knight of Pentacles is, it's a very slow moving night, but it's a very loyal and stable night. Um, for some, this could be someone that has like, you know, uh, issues with cheating and they need to forgive themselves for that, but also take the steps to heal that pattern, see where that pattern comes from, like the root of it. Is it abandonment issues? Is it a fear of you know, this person's going to leave me first, or they're going to cheat on me first, or I'm not going to be good enough for them. Like what, what's causing that? What's causing the cheating? Um, not, not excusing it, but just, you know, taking a deeper look to do the healing work with the temperance energy and knight of pentacles, you know, um, this like slow, but, but stable energy really, you know, setting that foundation over time, really looking at those patterns, honestly, um, getting to the, the, the root of things basically. But yeah, self-forgiveness is just, it's going to be very important here. And if you apologize to someone and they don't forgive you, I mean, it sucks. Like it's, it's difficult, but it, it's like, sometimes you just, I don't know if you care about someone and you want them in your life. It's like, you want to apologize to them. You know what I mean? And if they don't accept your apology, that's, that's incredibly painful. Like, you know, I know from experience that's, that's devastating, but at the same time, it's like, you, you need to apologize either way, regardless of how they take it, because, because that is, that's your truth. You know what I mean? Because you're genuinely sorry. So you should be honest about that. Um, And I feel like that helps you forgive yourself regardless of whether the other person forgives you or not. Like it's, it, it's like at least, at least they know that you're genuinely sorry, you know? Um, what else? Four of swords, 10 of swords. Yeah, that stagnation is coming to an end. For some, it might be like a purging, like hitting rock bottom where it's like, it might be a roller coaster for some of you where it's like, you've been stagnant, nothing's been happening. And then all of a sudden, all this emotion just hits you out of nowhere at once over the next few weeks. And you're in this like 10 of swords energy. And it just feels like the world is ending, like you're at rock bottom. And then out of nowhere, you're in nine of cups. Nine of cups is wish fulfillment. It's your manifestations finally coming in, like, like seeing those manifestations in the physical. It's like, getting what you've been wishing for, praying for, wanting. Um, so, I mean, it's a really good energy to like go from this stagnant energy to it's like you're feeling everything at once, but it's actually a beautiful thing. It's like a purging process. And then you're in this, this beautiful nine of cups energy, page of swords. Yeah, like I said, you guys need to not 
run. You you guys really need to be honest with yourselves and honest with the people around you. Because Seven of Swords is like escaping, it's dishonesty, it can be sneakiness. Because for some Page of Swords, you're going to have these truths that are coming in. Um, again, whether these truths are about yourself or about the people around you, whatever they might be. Um, and it's important to face those truths and not just run from them. Okay, let's wrap this up. Sorry. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles, the sun. Three of Pentacles, Knight of Cups. Ace of Pentacles. I like that the Ace of Pentacles is coming up again. And I like that there was the not only the Queen of Pentacles, but also the King of Pentacles in that last spread. It's almost like there could be like a divine pair, like a Queen and King of Pentacles type coming together. Um, this could be like a business partnership even. But someone's going forward and like building something with someone here. And this is going to be something that you're going to see results of in the physical world with the Knight of Cups and then the, the Ace of Cups or the Ace of Pentacles. Um, it's like building something together and it's going to be opening your heart up more. There might be like a heart chakra opening between the two of you. For some, it's like a physical sensation you can actually feel. Like you can actually kind of, you feel that vibration of your heart chakra opening. Um, but it's going to bring about these blessings in the physical world. So anyway, I'm just going to leave you guys with that. I hope, I know that was a lot. I hope you guys processed all of that. I'm not sure if anyone really stayed to the end because I know... A lot of heavy information in there, but I hope it helps someone. So thank you guys for watching. I'll come back with, with some more normal readings in the near future. <laughs>